السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمد الله ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to our ninth episode of our series, The Saviors of Islam where we have been discussing the great legends and personalities of Islam that have left a mark and a legacy all throughout the world Today we'll be speaking about a man, a legend, a hero, a savior of Islam that despite coming centuries and years after the Khayr al-Qurun, coming centuries after the Sahabas, and centuries after the Tabi'een and Atba'u Tabi'een, he still emulated the same passion, the same zeal, the same practice as those individuals. He was considered to be a flower from that bouquet. He was considered to be a tree from that garden that was left behind. He was a person in a legend that came way after them but was considered to be amongst him. Like Ataullah Bukhari rahimahullah would say, that the caravan of the Sahabas have left, but they have left this man behind. They have left, but he was supposed to be amongst them. My dear brothers and sisters, we see that all throughout the history of Islam, we have faced many fitans and many challenges and trials that have, that have, that have attempted to contaminate the, the purity of our religion and contaminate the hearts of the Muslims all throughout the world. And with every challenge and with every fitna, they have, Allah has brought individuals and personalities that have been used to vanquish and erase those types of ideologies and those types of, that, that type of mindset from the world. And Abu Hassan Ilani rahimahullah would say that with every challenge that has come towards the Muslims, Allah has preserved someone to take care of them. Similarly, in the late 19th century, recent history, within the region of the, within the subcontinent region, there was a man, just like there was a man at the time of the Sahabas after the demise of the Prophet ﷺ, by the name of Musaylam ibn Kadhab, who attempted to say that he was a prophet, and he claimed that he was a prophet, and he brought this fitna and confusion amongst the Muslims at that time. Similarly, in recent history, there was a man after the British left the subcontinent region. He was planted as a seed to, to attempt to contaminate the beautiful creed of Islam. And he also claimed to be the Mahdi, the chosen one. And he claimed, na'udhu billah, to be a prophet after the greatest prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he started this revolution within this region. But Allah preserved for him a man that would challenge him and that would defeat him and his ideologies and mindsets for the world to know his falsehood and for him to know the fabrication that he had, that he had begun. He was a man that if it was not for him, many people would still believe Billah, in this man's testimony and his truthfulness. But Allah preserved him. And this is why Muan Shabir Uthmani rahimahullah would say, that if people would ask me, have I seen Allama ibn Hajar al-Asqalani? Have I seen the likes of Allama Aini, the greatest commentators of As-Sahih al-Bukhari? I will look at them with pride and say that yes, I may have not seen them, but I have seen someone that is contemporary to them and that is none other than that individual who became the savior of the seal of prophethood of the Prophet وسلم, the muhaddith of our, of our era, who is none other than Allama Muhammad Anwar Shah Kashmir rahimahullah ta'ala. Da'il ayyama taf'alu ma tasha wa tib nafsan idha hakam al-qada wala tajza li hadithatil layali what made Sheikh Anwar Shah Kashmir rahimahullah, the legend that he was, despite coming so late in the timeline of scholars and in recent history, born in the year of 1875 in the late 19th century, we can deduce two beautiful qualities in his life that, this, that made him and that created him to be the hero that he was. Number one, his continuous and perpetual dedication to reading and learning the sciences of Islam. And number two, the role of him understanding the fact that with this knowledge comes a great responsibility. 
And when I see something which is against the teachings of Islam, I will have to use that knowledge of mine to stand up against batil and stand up for haq. These were the two qualities that helped mold him from the many qualities. These were the two qualities that helped mold him into the legend that he was and that he remains in the hearts of the believers today. As for his knowledge, my dear brothers and sisters, as for his knowledge and his dedication, Mufti Shabir Uthmani rahimahullah, who is the author of Ma'arif al-Sunan, one of the greatest works of tafsir of recent time, he says that one night it was rumored that our great teacher, Shaykh Anwar Shah Kashmiri, has passed away. And we finished praying our salah, our maghrib salah, and we rushed to his house. And as we rushed to his house, we knock on the door, and the door is open for us. And we're in this great fear that our teacher, our, our, our mentor, the hand over our heads, the cloud that was feeding us water and giving us knowledge has left the world. How can we move on? This struggle, we were thinking about these different scenarios and as we enter inside of this room, we see such a, a beautiful man. Mulana Anusha Kashmir Rahimullah, it is said about him by Ta'ullah Shah Bukhari Rahimullah that people will accept Islam just by seeing the beauty of his face. And it said about him, Ma'adiris Mirti Rahimullah says a story that one day we were traveling on train from Punjab and the ticket, the person that was giving us a ticket was a Hindu. And he saw Mulana Anwar Shah Kashmiri and he said to himself, to us, that I have never seen a man so beautiful with such awe and peace of mind. Who is this man? And then he took this opportunity to give him da'wah and at that moment he became a Muslim. Such a beautiful person. And he displayed the true meaning of his name of Noor. He had so much light radiating from his face. Nonetheless, we see the beautiful teacher of ours sitting down on his sajada. And we move closer to him, and it was dark. And we see him holding a book and bowing down until, until his head was almost touching the pages of the book due to the lack of the light in the room. And we said to him, happy, because our teacher was still alive, but yet concerned that why, why in this state? Would you choose to read books? Take some rest, our teacher. Take some rest. And he smiled and he said to me, that what can I do? What can I do? Reading books and continuously learning more has become an addiction for me. This was his perpetual and continuous zeal for learning knowledge. Mulana Ashrafali Tani Rahimullah, the great legend of Islam would say, that one day I sat, just one, he was not his student, he was a contemporary. So one day I sat in his dars, in his halqa of Sahih al-Bukhari. And when I left, I was, it was clear to me as a morning light when the sun rises, that he is min alamatillah. He is a proof from Allah that our religion is true. Every single word that he said, I could have written a book on it because it was so deep. Mufti Shabir Uthman, he says, that learning Sahih al-Bukhari from Shaykh Anwar Shah Kashmir rahimullah was as if I was learning Bukhari from Ibn Hajar and Allama Aini themselves. Such a man who had grasp of the science of hadith. And this was not the opinion of the, the, the scholars of the subcontinent region and, and confined to them only, but rather his, his, his fame and, and his knowledge reached every corner of the Muslim kingdom until the likes of the scholars of, the, of Sham and Azhar and, and, and Egypt would say, لَوْ سَبَقَ بِهِ الزَّمَانِ لَعُدَّ مِنِ الْأَعْيَانِ That the only problem that we have over here is that if time was to restart and if time was to begin again, metaphorically speaking, Shaykh Anwar Shah Kashmir rahimullah, would have come at the time of Allama Ibn Hajr and Allama Aini and the great scholars and the commentators of Bukhari and Muslim. Because his knowledge was in was, could be compared to the knowledge of those scholars. He was a different breed in the 19th century and in the early 20th century. This is just the amount of knowledge that he had. Someone once came to him and said to him, Thou Shaykh, you're a great scholar by all means, but you haven't written many books. Which is also not true. He's written books on different sciences of, of deen all throughout the sciences. He has written, a, he written books on the commentary of Bukhari and Fayd al-Bari. He written books on the commentary of Tirmidhi, of Jami' al-Tirmidhi, of Arf al-Shadi. But nonetheless, he says to this man that you're right. 
I haven't written many books, but I'll tell you what I have done. If you want to read my book on hadith, look at my beautiful student, Mulana Yusuf bin Nuri, rahimahullah ta'ala. If you want to see my work in tafsir, look at my student, Mufti Shabir Uthmani, rahimahullah ta'ala. Mulana Yusuf bin Nuri has written one of the greatest commentaries on Jami Atilmidi, which is named Ma'arif al-Sunan. We want to look at tafsir, look at Ma'arif al-Sunan, who the, who the writer of and the author of that was Mufti Shabir Uthmani. If you want to look at my seerah, look at Mulana Idris Kandawli, rahimahullah, who has written a book called Seerah al-Mustafa, which uh, it has been said about this book, whosoever reads it from cover to cover will not die until he sees the Prophet in his dream. If you want to see my work and how, how diligent I am, look at my student Qari Tayyib Qasimi rahimahullah ta'ala. Just look at them, because indeed the fruit does not fall far from the tree. These are my students and I put that knowledge within them. And they are personifying it and displaying it for the world to see. I don't have to write books, these are my people. You know how Allama Iqbal says about him, where can we find a scholar who can speak about Ibn Hajar? Who can speak about Ibn Rushd? Who can speak about Ghazali? Who can speak about Ibn Sina? Who can speak about Ibn Taymiyyah? Who can speak about these legends of Islam that were used and that had mastered different subjects, specific subjects of Islam? This one man can speak about all of them with great knowledge, eloquence, in an eye of, of, of being a critic and still be correct. Where can we find a scholar who was a poet, who was a master of the nafs, who was a master of hadith? Who was a master of tafsir? Where can we find a person like that? This was Mulana Anwar Shah Kashmiri, rahimahullah ta'ala. Lama Iqbal says about him that when I was in this phase of mine and being intrigued by this fitna that came in that time, I had went to meet Mulana Anwar Shah Kashmiri, rahimahullah ta'ala. And before meeting him, before meeting him, there's something very profound. Just before meeting him, I thought that every scholar was a jahil. In the subcontinent region, they call them Mulvis. I thought every Mulvi was a jahil. And once I met him and I left his gathering, I thought the entire world was a jahil, including me, except for Mulan Anwar Shah Kashmir. Rahimahullah. This was his grasp over the different sciences of Islam and the different sciences of knowledge. This is a small portion of his knowledge that we are speaking about. Just a small uh, insight, a preview to the great legend that he was and speaking about the great knowledge that he had. But his second quality that, he, that brought him to the heights that it did was his role in understanding the responsibility that came with this knowledge. That man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yughayru biyadi fa in lam tastati' fa bi lisani fa in lam tastati' fa bi qalbi wa dhalika adha'afu al-iman That when a person sees something which is directly contradictory to the teachings of Islam, he finds it within himself to stand up against it, to speak about it, speak against it, to, to physically try to protect the people from these types of conflicts and trials. If he can't do that, at least speak about it. If he can't do that, at least feel that like it's something which is completely wrong. And this is what Anwar Shah Kashmir did when the fitna and the trial and the calamity against the subcontinent region came in the, in the, in the, in the, in the face of a man who, who claimed to be a prophet. Mirza Ahmed Qadiani. And he said, when the British left, they planted the seed of, of corruption within the, Muslim, within the Muslim community. And this man grew and grew until people, Muslims, started to become intrigued by his, by his different ideologies and his, and his different ways of thinking and reforming Islam. And even today's time, Muslims become lost within new ideologies and new mindsets. Oh, this person, this is a different way of looking at Islam. Islam, the way to look at Islam is how the Sahaba looked at Islam. The way to look at Islam was how the Tabi'een looked at Islam. The way to look at Islam is how the Atba'u Tabi'een looked at Islam. Now how, how different people try to bring and introduce and innovate different ideologies to corrupt and contaminate our pure beliefs. Islam is like pure water. We don't need anything else. It's enough for us. We don't need any more different types of ideologies to make it stronger or to make it more concrete. So Mulan Anwar Shah Kashmir, rahimahullah, when this man rose to his fitna of claiming to be the Mahdi, to claiming to be a prophet, reached the rank of saying that, that Allah, can, Allah sends Jibreel to me. 
he said to his students, that I have defended my fiqh, I have defended hadith, but what face will I have to show to the Prophet ﷺ on the day of judgment when he says to me, you, def you, you defended these different sciences, but a man rose and he claimed and he, and he said that he was a prophet and you never defended me? Oh, the poet says, why not leave this world following the, the leadership in the path the Prophet has set for us? Sooner or later, we're going to leave this world anyways. Might as well do it on the right path. So this thought came to his mind. Now how, can I, how can I not protect the sanctity, the seal of prophethood of the Prophet Khatimul Anbiya? The last prophet of the world and the greatest of them all. How can I not protect that man who bled for us, who cried for us, who, who, who put his life on, on the line so that today we can say that we are Muhammadis and tomorrow we can enter Jannah because the prophet sacrificed for us. So he said to his students, I can't live like this. And he started a revolution against his ideology. And today we as Muslims together are grateful to this khidmah and service that he did to the world to prove to the world the lies and the fabrications of this man. The, the, he opened up the truth of this man while people were being lost in the confusion of his lies. And today there is a difference between a person that believes in that and that does not believe in that. The difference is clear cut. Because people like Mulana Anwar Shah Kashmir rahimullah, understood that there is a responsibility upon our shoulders to speak about the truth when it comes to us. Similarly, my dear brothers and sisters, in this time, in this era, there are times where many of our friends, many of the youth, many of our, sometimes even our uncles and aunties and parents, start bringing or introducing new ideologies or falling for new ideas. It is a part of our understanding, it is far for us that we also encourage them and educate them on what is right. And the only way that is possible is if we do the first thing that Sheikh Anwar Shah Kashmiri did, and that was to educate himself. Once we educate ourselves and put knowledge inside of our hearts, then we can help the Ummah. We have people that have educated themselves, but they have become like a river in a, in a small pond or a small pond. Where if someone wants to benefit from them, they have to come to that pond and take water out. Mulan Anwar Shah Kashmiri and the great scholars of the past were like, a, were like a cloud. And they would go to those and give them without them even wanting it. And they would benefit the entire ummah and not just one area. So we first have to educate ourselves. And then we have to take the second step in making sure that our knowledge is reaching people. And we do our due right and due diligence of helping the ummah. Lastly, I would add this portion that I have had the good fortune, many of these people that we have spoken about, Hassan al-Basri, Umar al Aziz, Salahuddin Ayyubi, Imam, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, Imam Malik rahimahullah, Imam Ahmed ibn Hamad rahimahullah. These are individuals that we have benefited from indirectly through their books, through their teachings. But Mulan Ushaq Kashmir rahimahullah is a man that I can say we have benefited from directly. Because one of his greatest students who was Mawlana Yusuf bin Nuri rahimahullah ta'ala was a man that Sheikh Anwar Shah Kashmiri sent to a city in Karachi and he instituted a school, an organization, a madrasa, a darul ulum, a ma'ahad by the name of Jamiatul Ulum al Islamiya bin Nuri town. And he was the founder and he was the, the, the head teacher of this jamia. And I had the good fortune with many other scholars all across the world to, to go there and study a hadith from his students. So my chain goes from Haddathani Dr. Abdul Razak wa Haddathahu Sheikh Yusuf bin Nuri wa Haddathahu Sheikh Anwar Shah Kashmir rahimahullah ta'ala. So we had a good fortune to study from the students of the students of Sheikh Anwar Shah Kashmir rahimahullah and to really see the truth of this man, to really see the, the legend that he was from his grand students because my teachers heard his stories from the students from the teacher himself of Mulan Anwar Shah Kashmir rahimahullah ta'ala so alhamdulillah we had a good fortune tahdidan bin ni'mah I'm saying 
we had the good fortune to benefit from these people. And in today's time, we see scholars leaving the world, right? And in quick paces and quite fast, they are leaving the world. We make it a part of our life that we, if we cannot study from them and cannot benefit directly from them, we at least build love for them. We at least have a great level of respect for them. That these are people that have dedicated their lives for learning knowledge and transmitting the knowledge all across the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the tawfiq firstly and all of you to understand the greatness of this man. And take, take these two points home that we have to educate ourselves and dedicate ourselves to knowledge. Learning knowledge is not something we do, read a book and stop. We have to dedicate ourselves to learning knowledge in whichever capacity that we can. Something consistently. Whatever we're doing, we do it. If we study once a week, we do it consistently. If we study once a month, we do it consistently. Whatever we're doing, we do it with consistency, and we will see the effect of that knowledge coming into our heart. And we take that knowledge and we put it into a'mal and make sure the ummah benefits from that. We are not fragrance which is left inside of a bottle. We are fragrance that is that is that is taken and spread all across of the room. So anyone that walks inside can smell it and benefit from it. May Allah give me the ability to act upon this and all of you the ability to bring these qualities into our life and understand the greatness and the honor and the respect of even the recent scholars that have come and think of them nothing less than the scholars that came before them but rather have some level of honor for these people and give us the ability to, per to display those same type of qualities into our life. Jazakallah khair. وأخذ دعوة الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته